Lovely. Welcome, everyone. Thanks, Audrey. Thanks, Sarah. And welcome, everyone, to a special edition of Growing Together um, on this St. John of God Zoom channel with me, Aliyah Levine. Uh, and I'm representing Seed Scholars. And our session today is in honor of National Heritage Week. So I'm really excited to be back again with you. I'm just looking through and seeing some familiar faces. Hello, hi, Laura. Hi, Jackie and John and Dave and Patty. Hi, Alex, Francis, Katie. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. And uh, today we're, we're gonna do things a little bit differently than our other Growing Together sessions were. Um, we'll still do our plant part stretch, if you remember that from our Growing Together sessions, and we'll do a visualization together. Um, and then we're gonna learn about more plants than usual. Um, and all of these are native Irish plants, and that's because we're focusing on our heritage at our doorstep today um, in honor of Heritage Week. So naturally occurring plants in Ireland, all of those today, and we'll talk a little bit about their folklore and how you might grow them and see if you have any stories that come up about those plants too. So uh, I'm, I'm here from West Meath today in the polytunnel. Remember this spot? I have some big sunflowers that just got enormous and tipped over. They were so heavy. So that's my background today in the polytunnel. And uh, I'm curious where you're calling from. So if you are calling from north of Westmead, can I see your hands up here? If you're calling from north of Westmead, if you're calling from south of Westmead, if you're staying in Cork at the moment, somewhere south, Waterford, Wexford, if you're mm -hmm. calling from east of Westmead, hands over here. If you're in Dublin and west, is anyone in Galway, Mayo, Sligo? All right, calling from a few different spots. And we'll get going with a little stretch to get in the mindset of talking and thinking about plants and seeing some different plants. So you can be seated or stand up to join me in the stretch. Either way is fine. We're going to get our bodies and our minds awake, moving oxygen to all parts of our body with movement and breath. So if you'd like to join me, I'm going to start as little seed. Little seed. I'm hugging my knees. If you're seated, you can hug your knees. Deep breath in and out. And then I'm going to stretch out my roots, stretching out our roots, stretching out our hands, finding the nutrients in the soil. Deep breath in and out. And getting nice and tall with our posture, if you're seated or standing. This is our stem stance. Deep breath in and out. And stretching out our leaves, stretching out tall with our leaves. Here's my leaves. Maybe you're a tree, maybe you're a flower. Bear your leaves and deep breath in and out. And for our flower, I'm going to bring my flower above my head, or maybe your flower's over here. But I'm going to do a twirl for my flower. And finally, my fruit. For my fruit, I'm going to give myself a hug. Deep breath in and out. Great. I saw lots of plant parts there getting a good stretch and a good breath movement so we can waken up our bodies and our minds. Awesome. Um, so before we talk about some specific plants, I wanted to try a visualization with you. So for this part, if you can find a nice, comfortable seated position with both legs on the floor and your hands can be resting on top of your knees or up 
facing up on your knees. Down is for groundedness, if you wanna feel rooted in your place. And hands up can be if you're feeling open and interested in receiving. The sun just came out for me. I wonder if it did for you too. It's really bright in here. And the forecast was for rain, so we'll see what happens. But we're seated, hands down or up on our knees. And slowly soften your gaze. Perhaps you're facing a window or you're directed looking at one of the plants we've grown together or you've grown on your own. And your lids are softening. So your eyelids fall softly closed. So our eyes are now closed. And I'd like you to travel in your mind's eye. Take a trip, take a holiday in your mind to an open space near where you live. So maybe there's a field, maybe there's a small woodland, or even a road verge. Any open space near you. If you can't picture one near you, it could also be something that you picture a place near where you grew up. A natural environment. Once you've traveled there in your imagination, now imagine you're walking through that place. Step by step, and what do you see? Just picturing what is it that you are seeing in that place? Are there any insects or birds? What plants are there? What colors? And continuing your walk through that place, this special natural place, what do you hear? What sounds are there? Are there any cows or chickens? Maybe there's a buzz of bees. Maybe it's silent. And traveling a bit further into this place, what do you feel? How does the ground feel? under your feet? Is there a breeze, the wind touching your skin? Is there anything you can taste there? Any berries to be picked? Fruit on some trees? Maybe it's the wetness of the rain So finally, is there anything in particular that you're smelling in this place? Elderflower, wet grass, any of those rich smells that you can imagine and remember strongly there. Mm, the wind is calling out for Katie. Mm -hmm. If anything's coming up, we're going to slowly, gently open our eyes now, back into a soft gaze. If there's a window near you or you're outside taking in the landscape with a big, wide, owl-eyed peripheral vision, there's so much to take in, so much to hear with dear ears or feel with a fox walk. Great. So welcome back everyone from your journey into your mind, into your natural place. Uh, if you noticed anything in particular, something you felt or you saw or you smelled or you heard or you touched when you were on that imagination walk, you can write it into the chat. We can also hear from a couple people. 
if you have something you'd like to share, I can, you can show me flower fingers. Patty, what did you experience? Can you unmute Patty? Uh, uh, I, I planted my own flowers outside. Lovely. Which flowers yeah. did you plant? Do you want me to bring the tablet out and show you? They're out at the front. If it's, yeah, if it's nearby, you can yeah. quickly show us. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah, and if anyone wants to actually show us something that they were imagining and it's near you, if you want to get ready and get next to that place, we can sweep through and see all of the plants. Colors of the wind. That's, that's, one, that's one plant. Lovely. If everyone can see Patty's screen showing us a plant. Lovely. Well done, Patty. And these are another two. If anyone else wants to show flower fingers, if they want to share what they pictured in their imagination or something that's there at their home, I'm looking for flower fingers. Someone wants to show what they have. Flower fingers. Anyone else want to show us something? At Katrina, that's my name. Katrina, sorry. I'll show you, yeah. If it's not raining now, I, oh, I did a bit damp, damp. Hang on, I got to Did the flowers anyway? Oh, very nice. You have a lovely space there. We're looking at yeah. Katrina's screen. <laughs> very nice. What color flowers do you have? Maybe. Um, some of them are red, some of them are blue, some of them are yellow, some of them are white, or brown, or I don't know. Lovely. Ladies. Do they smell nice? Yes. Very good. Um, coming back together and thinking about Ireland's landscape over time, do you think that Ireland looked the way that you imagined on your journey? for the past 10 years? Thumbs up if you think it looked like that. If you pictured an open field or maybe you pictured something else, do you think it's looked like that, stayed the same for the past 10 years? Looking for thumbs. Thumbs down. Do you think it's looked that way for the past 100 years, the way that you pictured it? Has it stayed the same? The past 100 years, the way that you imagined it? You think so? Or if you don't, if you're not sure, or if you don't think so? <laughs> Thumbs down. What about the past million years? Has the place you imagined stayed the same? Has it always looked that way? Thumbs up if you think yes. Thumbs side if no, thumbs down. Sorry, some thumbs side if not sure, and thumbs down if no. Okay, some of you, I'm seeing Alex, I'm seeing some other thumbs saying, yeah, I think it stayed that way for so long. So thumbs down, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. And coming back into our minds. So Ireland's landscape has changed a lot over time because of plate tectonics, climate change, the ice ages, because of practices of modern farming, where we're taking out a bunch of trees and putting in fields and using grazing animals on the land for different uses. And far, we've only had farming intensively for the, since the 20th century, since the 1900s or so. And farming in general has only existed for the past 12,000 years. So Ireland, this land has existed for so, so, so long. And it's changed so much along the way that the way that it looks now is very different from how it's looked over time. And what used to be covered in 80% of native plants, a lot of woodland, 80% of the land, a lot of it is now big fields. There's not as many trees at all left in Ireland or as many of our natural plants. However, today we're gonna look at four of them that have been here since ancient times. 
and learn a little bit about their history and see if you remember anything special about these plants growing up. So, and just to note, I, of course, we can tell from my accent, I'm not Irish. <laughs> Some of you might remember I am from Los Angeles, California. Um, my accent might give me away. Um, so there's a lot for me to learn about the plants here. And part of learning about place and me feeling at home in a place is learning about a place's plants. So that's what part of what we're up to today. And if, if you have memories of these plants as I show them, please feel free to type into the chat and we'll also have some time to share at the end, I'm hoping. So the first plant I'm gonna show you First, I'm going to see if you can guess what it is. Can anyone guess what this is? Alex, do you have a guess? Do you want to unmute? A, tr a tree. Yeah, it is. It's a shrub. It's a kind shrub. of tree. Does anyone know the name? Want to have give it a go? Any guesses? Looking through, you can type it into the chat. Patty has a guess. Patty, what's your guess? Um, my guess is it dandelion. Good White guess. Dandelion. Good guess, but not quite. Notice these here. Yeah. And its leaves are downy. They're kind of floppy. Yeah. And it has these catkins on it which are the female parts of its seed, of its, of its way of germinating. Oh, yeah. Anyone have an next guess? We can, eat, we can eat this part of the plant. I see, I see a wave from Lizzie. Do you want to guess, Lizzie? Um, hazelnut. Hazelnut, she got it. Plant, <laughs> this is a very wise plant lady, Lizzie, over there. Um, wow, and it just started pouring rain where I am. I don't know if it's raining where you are. But this is a hazelnut shrub. It's sometimes classified as a tree or a shrub. It's often found in hedgerows and it likes to live near water. So growing up in Los Angeles, very dry. I did not see a lot of hazelnut plants. But here in Ireland, we're super lucky. There's so many hazelnut plants. And it's very commonly seen in Irish folklore, I've been learning. And I wonder if you grew up with any of these stories or hearing any special stories about hazelnut or picking the hazelnuts and roasting them or biting straight into the ripe ones. And if you have, I'm looking into the chat. Let us know, and you can also give me a thumbs up if you remember eating hazelnuts growing up. Yeah. And in Irish folklore, this tree is known as a noble plant. It's very sacred because of its nuts and because of its branches, which can be very straight and can be used for many different important purposes. Uh, and in mythical and folkloric terms, people, there's lots of stories of people in Irish folklore holding a hazel rod as protection because it's seen to be magical and a way to keep safe. And people who are on journeys, on long dangerous journeys, might attach hazel rods to their horses or hold them in their hands or even bury their sacred dead with hazel to protect them from evil. So very mystical special plant. <laughs> oh yeah, I see something in the chat says it looks like pasta and spinach leaves. <laughs> That's a good observation. So whatever helps you to remember what it looks like. This is hazel and if you see these little pods, those are where the nuts are hiding. And if you peel the pods and put the hazel nuts into water and the nuts sink, that means that they're viable and you can eat them and you can scratch them. You can do a scratch on the nut and uh, keep them in some soil and they will grow. So you can grow your own 
hazelnuts. So that's the first plant. Uh, can anyone remember eating hazelnuts growing up? Or even recently? Or have you had a hazelnut cake or hazelnut cookies? Anybody? Yeah, see Veronica. Some hazelnut eaters or hazelnut lovers. <laughs> the next one I wanted to show you is a very important plant in Irish history and Irish folklore that I've been learning about. And I wonder if you grew up with these stories too. It's this plant. I want to see if anyone can guess what it is. It has dark green leaves. They're kind of like needles and it's evergreen. It keeps its leaves all year. It's a really important plant for Ireland. You, you find it a lot in uh, the backs of churches and graveyards. <clears throat> Any guesses of this one? They can grow super old. They stay around for a really long time and it's really bad luck to cut them down. Any guesses? This one, it starts with the letter Y. My final clue. Francis, do you have a guess? Katie gave a guess there on the chat. Oh, very good. Oh, um, is it pine cone leaves? Oh, yeah. good guess. It's not a pine, but it is a good guess because it looks kind of similar to a pine. This one is, drum roll please, You. This is part of a yew tree. I see thumbs up from Hans. Yes, this is part of the yew tree. And uh, the reason it's planted in such sacred places is a little bit practical. It's because it's actually quite poisonous. So it's meant to keep away any grazing cattle or other animals that might interrupt uh, graveyards or holy places. Um, but it's kind of a dual purpose because there's a darkness to the you with its poisonousness, but it's also meant to represent eternity and this really magical uh, ongoing life. So there's many, many uh, facets to the you. And next time you see one, try to think about how old it might be and what it's been protecting. There's lots of land places in Ireland named after this tree. So that's the next one. Uh, another plant I wanted to show you today is this one. This one's really tricky. So I wonder if anyone can guess it. It has a reddish bark and leathery dark green leaves with a bit of a toothed edge on the leaves, you can see there, jagged edge there. It makes black berries that are round, but you do not want to eat them. It's a tricky one. Any guesses? The berries look like slows. They might look like blackthorn berries, but they're not. This one might be trying to trick you. Okay, drum roll, please. This one. Is it, is it, a, is it a black? Is it a blackberry? Ah, good guess. It does have blackberries, but they are the berries. This one makes are circular and they're not on the plant yet. Um, so instead of having a bunch of little circles on them like a blackberry, it's just one round sphere. And this is called a purging buckthorn. What do you think it means by purging? Do you think you wanna eat it? <laughs> yes or no? No, not quite. The purging buckthorn uh, is a diuretic, so it cleanses you out if you have it. It's not recommended to eat, um, but it has historically been used 
in ancient times for medicinal purposes if people needed to clear out any bad stuff that was going through them. And the buckthorn's been around a long time. Its cousin, the alder, alder buckthorn, uh, the bark for that is used for charcoal. So it has some very powerful uh, family members as well. So that's what it looks like. And try not to confuse this one with blackthorn. Blackthorn will have thorns along its spine, but the buckthorn does not. It has smooth reddish brown bark. And that's one way to know the difference. All right, the last one I have for you today is one I think that you know quite well. We've even chatted about it by accident. And this one is right here. It's a good friend to many of us. If you're on a long walk and you get hungry, it has some ripe berries and some unripe berries in the one I'm holding. I think Fergal knows. Fergal, what do you think it is? Just know. This is indeed a blackberry. So the blackberries are delicious. Can I see flower fingers if you've ever had a blackberry? Yeah, loads of us. Delicious. You can pick them on your journey. You don't have to buy them in the store, especially in Ireland. They're also called brambles. They grow really wild plentifully, which is amazing. And a cool strategy I recently learned is that if you pick off a ripe berry and you or a bunch of them and you blend them in the blender, you can strain it through a sieve and you'll get the seeds and you can scratch some of the seeds or maybe some of them are scratched from the blender and you can keep them with some damp peat moss in the fridge cold and you can plant them out and start your own blackberries and I've never thought to do that. Um, luckily where I live here, there's loads already and I don't feel I need to grow them. But if you want a hedgerow of blackberries, you can try growing them yourself. Uh, and I'll include the instructions and advice for that in the resources after this chat. So here's blackberries. They are really popular in Irish folklore as well. Um, the cordial made from blackberries is considered to have restorative powers. It can bring you back if you're not feeling well. So if anyone's feeling uh, a little off, maybe you can have some blackberry. Um, and there's a phrase in Irish um, that means that the best part of a collection, the best of whatever you get, uh, the phrasing for it means that's the topmost blackberry. So if you get a really nice collection of flowers, the nicest flower, in Irish, the phrase would be saying, that's the topmost blackberry. So it's thought of very kindly. And uh, they're also meant to, to keep certain things safe. And if there's like a bramble that's attached to you because they have these spiky bits, that's meant to say, oh, you, you have some luck going with you. So there's some nice things about the blackberry. Um, I know we're reaching the end of our time, but I just wanted to show you a couple resources. And while I'm doing that, if you have any special memories about any of these plants, please feel free to put them into the chat. Um, this is really handy. It's the National Biodiversity Data Center's Tree and Shrub Identification uh, Resource. And it has all different trees and shrubs in here and it helps tell you how to identify them. And it's nice and small. You can just put it in your pocket if you're on a walk. Um, and these couple of books here are really cool and Irish specific um, by Niall Coiter. And it talks about the myths, legends, and folklore of Ireland's trees and Ireland's wild plants. And he has some other great books too that teach about the plants in the Irish context. So I recommend these as bedside reading if you want to learn some more about the stories behind the plants um, in Ireland. So um, that's, that's that for today. Um, if we have time, Sarah, for a couple questions or comments, or will we have to wrap up?
Emma, yeah. I think Jackie's in our garden. She's been in our garden waiting for you to show you something. Yeah. Oh, Jackie, great. Please awesome. show us. <laughs> I want to show you. Oh, here, look. What do we have there, Jackie? Oh. Sweet pea. Latin sweet pea. Jackie, can I get you just to move back a little bit and to look at your... Jackie, can I get you just to... You can do it again next week. We lost Elia now. Yeah. Oh, you're back, Elia. Hmm. You cut out just there. Uh, I hope to be joined again next week because I found it very interesting. Oh, very good. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're going to be back for a few more sessions, so that will be lovely. And, and those, those, love uh, leaflets, those, also, those leaflets, what to wear on the back? I have bed. some strawberries to show you guys, oh. too. Session. And the, and the leaflets, you know the leaflets you were on about? I would, yeah. I would like uh, some of those as well, if you Perfect. have some spare ones. Okay. Yeah. See I'll you again. Gone. Thanks. Thank See you. you next week. See you next time. All right, guys. Did we get Katrina back? All so much. And I know we went over a little bit. So thank you for bearing with me. And it was a pleasure to see your faces again and to have a chat about plants and learn some more about the native Irish ones that are all around us. So I hope that you can see some as you're out and about throughout the week and we can check back in next time we talk on what you've noticed. That's brilliant. Thanks so much, Elia. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. It was really good. Thank you so much. It was so interesting. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, big love. Thank you. See you next time.